Hello again, lovely people. I'm back with just a quick update on the remote. So I've gone ahead and breadboarded everything that I'll be putting on the remote, which will be three buttons, which I could show you. This is still a prototype, still a couple little glitches, like the centering of the joysticks, which, while I'm on the topic, it is a little tricky to do this, guys. I mean, if we were to use the default caps that come with it, the thumb whatever you want to call them, thumbsticks, uh, that shroud around it, which I understand covers and hides the electronics, but there's no way this is going on there. I really don't, I mean, I haven't researched or looked at how other people have done it, but I'm assuming you have to let the whole box of the joystick protrude out of your housing, and then for enough for that to cap on it, and then still for it to rotate. Because even with this homemade one that I made, let me zoom in on this, 3D printed one, I should say. Uh, I'm just a little off center, and you can see even my little stick hits the side of my housing and prevents the stick from going all the way. It's okay in the rest of the directions, but that one nails it. So you got to get that absolutely perfect, and I think I even have to enlarge my square hole a bit maybe even make it round. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do some research on that, figure out the best way to mount these guys. If anybody has any ideas or have done it before, please let me know. But that is really the only glitch left to fix in this housing, I think. So while I have it zoomed in, yes, we have these four buttons here. We'll have four slide potentiometers. These are just tightly tacked glued in right now, so I don't wanna mess with them too much. As you can see, they're not quite lined up. I'm still undecided how I'm going to mount these components right here, which will also be the smaller LCD, which is connected to the breadboard there, and the larger LCD, which is actually connected to the remote and live, as are the joysticks, which I'll actually boot up right now and show you how it's working while I'm still babbling. So there's one display, there's two displays, and yes, that too is just tacked with glue, so I missed by a good two millimeters. But you can see the joysticks are there and working. So that's cool. And then I decided to go with five LED strip here just to have some fun with colors and feedback of what buttons and what you're selecting and what you're doing kind of thing. So yeah, and then we also have a power switch up here. And then on the back I've put one of the double pole double throw switches in case I'm going to do some kind of mode setting. That might be cool to do, or we can use that for charging the battery, because that's still something to think about. I didn't put a voltage divider on here, so we're not right now going to be able to monitor the battery voltage. Um, I'm wondering if I should look for a little PCB charger slash monitor slash uh, over voltage protection, all that fun stuff for a LiPo to install on this. So if anybody has any clues on that, let me know. And then three buttons down here, which will be for kind of a start-stop mode kind of thing. And I think we'll be good. That should be plenty of controls, because with the notion of changing mode, now all the controls can take on whole new meaning, right? So we can really do endless. And then lastly are the buttons on joysticks. I'm not crazy about them, because honestly, you can see one of mine already isn't working and I can't tell you why. I mean, you can hear the tactile going, so why isn't it making connection? I'm pretty sure it's not a wiring thing because I've already tested and checked that, but anyhow, that all being said, guys, we are on the way. If I move this a bit, you can see the potentiometers are all set and going. They're displaying on that screen, which isn't all that pretty, but it's just enough to show me that they work. And then the buttons as well, good to go. And then our other four buttons, which are our top triggers, they're all good to go. And of course you could press them, trigger them all at once and press and hold for them to stay going, all that fun stuff. So they should do everything we need to do. Last step I have to do is to connect the NRF, which let's go ahead and shut this off for a second. And then I only lightly tack glued the housing together, so I should be able to just pry that open for a sec. Awesome. All right, so if we look in the bottom half, all that's in here are these two switches and the battery. 
that's it guys so that's why i'm thinking yes the nrf can probably go on one of these sides here even if somebody had mentioned you know won't that shroud the antenna and cause problems if it does we'll just cut a bunch of vent holes the way that i did here for the battery or i can install it up here in the top and even you know put a slot to totally expose the antenna if we want to so i'll, I'll do some testing on that as far as covering the antenna and see how well it still performs but then yes i think we have room here to put some kind of battery monitor circuit board whether it's diy which i probably don't want to do or just a couple dollar off the shelf one that'll help us with charging and monitoring the battery otherwise that's it for the back and then the front i have it connected still to the breadboard so i have to be a little well we'll have to look at it upside down sorry guys so yeah, the joysticks, I spent a bit of time getting them situated right, that the pocket that they sit in is pretty pretty accurate, pretty close. You can see they're pretty centered, but I do have to move it over a little bit, if not enlarge that square hole a bit. And yes, I'm getting tired of printing this guy. So I did do just a small square print of it, which I don't have on hand to show you which is much easier so that that's a tip guys whenever you're playing around with a big piece like this trying to get one piece situated right do yourself a favor and just chop your model around that one block and then just print that so that's what i did a couple of times to get this as perfect as i could and then i went and printed the whole thing pretty much for this video so that i could assemble it and show you guys what's going on so yeah currently these potentiometers the screen and this are just tacked hot glued in but I am thinking, rather than go through all the craziness of trying to mold the plastic to support these guys, the way that I did with this, the joysticks, I think it's going to become a one-piece kind of thing. Um, I am talking with somebody who's doing some really cool things with our STL files, actually turning them into true 3D models, so I'll be posting a video about that later. Um, but he had suggested that I should build a separate housing rather than try and attach these to the main housing, basically create another plastic box that I can mount, mount all of these um, components to, and then that whole assembly will mount to this. Makes perfect sense. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And if I have issue with that, we may just go with a DIY P PCB right here to hold the LEDs the OLED screens and the potentiometers so when I get to that part we'll figure that out but otherwise guys we're yeah almost there uh, as far as the code goes as you can see all the components are all coded and active well you did see when it was on so that's good to go just the NRF I've got to reconnect I have not connected it to the mega yet but I do have it on, on another breadboard next to the teensy with its pair and they're talking as i explained in a previous video so all i really have to do is get that plugged into the mega and then yeah we should be good to go so that's a good point too we still have to install the mega in here but i do have plenty of thickness so we may end up putting standoffs and installing the mega over the rest of this graphic uh components or putting tiny standoffs here and then and installing the mega right here and then have a jumper or two connecting the two together that may be a little tricky but we'll see how, what we do when we get there if i have to make this even a little bit thicker i think i can i mean for my hands which for for a big man i don't have the biggest hands so it works pretty good for me I actually had my girlfriend go ahead and pick it up too, who obviously has smaller hands than me, and she did say it felt a little large, but I, I think we'll be okay either way, guys. Um, I probably don't have to beef up the grips anymore. I can just beef up this back, pull this back piece out a few more millimeters to give us room to install the Mega. So yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the shaky camera. I'm trying to zoom out there for you. I will return again with an overall update video, which I was hoping this video would have been, but I'm not prepared. Um, there is a slight issue with MP3 players on a couple of our Novas, mine included. And then there was a typo in one of the latest wiring diagram for 5.2 circuit board for the Nano OLED. Um, hats off to Steffi for catching that, 
but I went ahead and fixed that on the latest diagram. So thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you all soon.